I'm going to be degassing some silicone and some resin. So the project this is for is a set of molds for some cool looking rocks. So it's going to be two part jacket molds. We have silicone to capture the detail, then rigid sides to hold the mold in shape, which can then be taken apart so that the cast item can be released even though the mold has undercuts. So the first step was to apply some glue over these rocks just to make sure that there's not any kind of grit left on it, even though I washed them. I just wanted to seal that and fill in any small holes so that the molds will come out nice and neat. Now I'm using hot glue to glue the rocks onto just some paper plates. This is going to keep the silicone from getting underneath the rocks and it also is just going to keep things a little bit neater as we add the layers on top. So I filled in the crack pretty well with that hot glue just so I wouldn't have too much trimming to do once the silicone is cured over top of these. So now they're not going to be moving around while I'm trying to apply everything. So this is going to make them nice and easy to work with. So the vacuum chamber that I'm using, I got it from Amazon and it comes with the gauge and everything. It doesn't come with the vacuum pump, not this particular one because I already had a vacuum pump. So the hose has connectors at the end that you just tighten into place with a screwdriver that just tightens up the clamp that's around the hose. And then this fitting fits right onto the vacuum pump's valve there. And it does kind of want to get all twisted, of course, as you're trying to screw it on. So you could just screw on the fitting separately and then tighten it on top. But I just found this to be easier. Because for storage, I need to have them separate. But if you don't need to store them separately, then you can just screw it on once and leave it in place. So of course on my pump, I've got the oil valve there. This already has oil probably a little bit too much oil in there. <laughs> and then the chamber itself, it's a nice big steel, kind of looks like a cooking pot, but it has these three clamps that hold the lid securely in place so that you don't lose vacuum or have to worry about if you bump into it. Clamps down very tightly. This is an acrylic lid. They also sell some that have polycarbonate lids, but I liked this one. Just happened to have the acrylic. I think with the polycarbonate, you just have to watch out. I think it's not for stabilizing resin, but the acrylic is, I think, fine for anything. It also comes with this silicone mat that goes inside. That's supposed to protect the bottom from spills. But I also just use a catch bucket that's larger than the container I'm using. It has that silicone gasket that's going to seal and hold your vacuum. We have the vacuum gauge and the valves that close off the air. There's also a filter that fits onto the end so that when you are letting air back into the pot, you're not sucking in a whole bunch of dust or whatever oil fumes are in the air back into your pot over your project. The top of the gauge has a rubber plug that when you first get it, the instructions say you're supposed to re remove that for like 15 minutes or something. Just let the pressure equalize so that you're going to get an accurate read. And then also this, I did have to screw it onto the lid, but it was not difficult at all. I just used two pairs of pliers to hold both sides of the bolt and just tightened that up a bit better than I could do just by hand. The only thing I don't like is that uh, the lid gets these dents in it just from the clamps. I mean, it really kind of bothered me at first because I felt like I was damaging it, but in the end it does not at all affect the functionality of the piece, so it's fine. It's not a big deal. The hose has a steel wire running through it to reinforce it so that it doesn't collapse under vacuum, so this is just the hose that came with the chamber. Now I got the five gallon size, and just to give you an idea of what size project you can fit, this is just a gallon, standard gallon jug of water, and you can see that the jug fits in there with plenty of space to the side and some on top, so you could do something that tall or probably even a little bit taller inside of the vacuum chamber. Um, and of course we're not going to be, <laughs> we're not going to be doing the, we're not going to be turning on the vacuum pump with the gallon jug in there, that would be insane, but just for example so you can see how much it holds. So these just grab onto that lid and pull it down very tightly onto the silicone seal. So this does hold its vacuum very well. You don't want to be leaving your pump running. It's not necessary and according to the instructions it can actually damage it. 
uh, but it's really just not necessary anyways. So we're going to move on to prepping the silicone now for degassing. So I have some brushable silicone from Smooth On. Now all I have is just a little bit left in the bottom of these tubs because I already used it for another project. So I'm going to have to kind of ration this a little bit. I was originally going to just pour the silicone over the rocks and not bother with the jacket part, but I didn't have enough silicone for that on hand. So we're just going to stretch the silicone and have some fun with the jacket part of the mold. So the instructions say to stir each part of the silicone before measuring it out. So I just did that with a stir stick. It's a platinum cure silicone and according to the instructions there's possibilities for cure inhibition depending on what you're putting this on so maybe just be aware of that. I haven't had any trouble with that so far. Uh, it worked fine with wood glue, it worked fine over... Um, you can put a lacquer down on the surface and that can help if you have something that might cause some cure inhibition but it really hasn't been an issue for me so far. I'm measuring it by weight, but actually you can do it by volume too with this particular project. I'm just so used to doing it by weight for the epoxy, and I just like how precise it is. So I'm just going to do it that way for this also. Part A is quite thick, so kind of a pain to get measured out in such small quantities. So part B is this fluorescent green, which makes it easier to tell if you have mixed the project uh, the product together thoroughly, so it's nice that one side has the coloring in it. It's a little bit easier to measure out, not quite as thick. Now one thing to note here is the weather outside that I'm working in, I'm not on an open patio, the weather is definitely warmer than the recommended 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna be having some trouble with it curing faster than it ought to, unfortunately, but uh, it'll be okay. So once I've got those measured out, I've gotta go ahead and stir this very thoroughly. Obviously, you don't want to have any parts that are unmixed. I also, after I stir it for a while, I go ahead and I switch out my stir stick just to make sure that there's not, you know, any left on there that didn't get mixed in properly. It does take a little bit of time. You want to work as quickly as you can to make, take advantage of your pot life, but it does have to be stirred thoroughly or it's not going to work well. You're going to end up with tacky spots. So I've got it all mixed now and I've got the pump set, out, out, set up outside because the vacuum pump does release oil into the air so this is not a type of pump that you want to be using indoors. So I've put my container of silicone into the larger pot just in case if I was to have a spill then that would catch it. I won't have a mess inside the pot itself. And I'm just going to buckle the lid down, go ahead and make sure my valves are both open when I'm starting it. And then once the pump is running I will close the valve that will stop it from sucking in any air so that the tank itself will, be, will have all the air evacuated. So once it gets to, once the needle stops moving, uh, the at full vacuum there, just about full vacuum, as soon as it stops moving you're supposed to switch off the pump, well close the valve to the vacuum then switch off the pump, you're not supposed to leave it running uh, according to the manufacturer's instructions. And it's not necessary anyway because this holds a vacuum very well. So you can see the silicone is bubbling up. I mean, it's not doing as much bubbling as I would have hoped, but that is because unfortunately it is so warm outside that it's already starting to get a bit thick. It's also a few weeks old, so you're supposed to use this as, or a couple of months old probably. You're supposed to use it as soon as possible. So I don't know if it's possible the materials are not as perfect as when I first got them, but this is what we've got to work with for now. So let's see what we've got. Now at some point here I did let some air back in just to try to pop some of those bubbles and then just switch the pump back on to pull the vacuum again. So once it's as degassed as I can get it, I'm not seeing any more bubbles popping even though there's still bubbles there. I'm going to go ahead and just let the air all back in and see kind of what's going on with that. You can see where the bubbles have popped on there. However, once you start poking at it with the brush, it 
is already starting to cure. It's getting quite thick, so now at this point I realized I was not surprised that no more bubbles were popping because this is already kind of a thick tooth toothpaste kind of texture here. So we need to really get this on the mold fast. So the first layer, I just want to make sure that I am getting into all of the details because this is going to be the surface coat that captures all the detail. If there's any areas there where it's not, where if you get a big air bubble trapped or something, then that's going to show up on all of your castings from it. So this is the time to make sure it's coated properly. And I'm just using an ordinary chip brush, nothing special here. Just brush it on all over. And then I'm also spreading some at the base. So I have a bit of a flange to work with. And because I've got the glue down at the base, that hot glue, I can just brush it in there and it's not going to leak underneath too far and make stuff that's messy and has to be trimmed up later. It should come out just about right. So you're supposed to do this in multiple thin layers, not one thick layer. It does stay in place pretty well just from brushing it on, but if it's a big globby mess, then it's going to start kind of dripping down and you're going to have areas that aren't properly, like aren't thick enough. They're going to be fragile. And I think it does make it easier to not have air bubbles trapped, just doing a couple of thin layers versus one thick layer. That's the plan. So I've hopefully saved enough for more than one layer. Probably about three layers, I think, is what it's going to end up being. You can see it's very thick, so really just needed to get it on there at this point. It is so warm outside. It's definitely making it cure much faster. So I just got to watch out for those annoying bristles when you're using these chip brushes. Uh, probably wouldn't really matter, but on the surface coat, I'm trying to keep it pretty nice. So while it is somewhat annoying that it's curing so fast, the nice thing is with the silicone is that it does cure so fast and you can get straight to the next layer just within sometimes even an hour. It seems like it's already cured out in this heat. So you do need to though with this, or it's recommended in the instructions anyways that you add additional coats before the first coat has fully cured, so once it's at that tacky state, same as with the epoxy. Otherwise, there's a potential for delamination. Although I think on other projects, I've pretty much let it cure fully and then come back to it later, and it was completely fine. So it probably just depends on the exact project, you know, how important it is. If you want to make absolutely sure that your layers are well bonded, then definitely catch it in that tacky stage. The other great thing about silicone is just that you don't have to do release agents and whatnot, so that's a nice change from working with the epoxy. With it being so thick, it's pretty easy to make sure this is all covered. And I kind of got the, the surface of the rock coated while it was still not quite as thick. So now I'm just trying to build that up over the higher areas. It's not going to be perfect on the first coat. We will get that all with another layer after this is partially cured. So since I didn't really get a chance to completely degas this with the silicone starting to set up so fast, I'm just going to try something else here. I'm just popping the whole thing into the vacuum chamber on the plate already on the rock, and we'll just see what happens. I think it's still not set enough that something will happen. I don't know how useful it'll be. So I don't obviously need the catch bowl in there because this is not going anywhere. It's already pretty well set up. So it did bubble up quite a lot, and I think we did pop quite a few more bubbles. It made the surface quite uneven, though, because when the bubbles popped, there uh, the material was already too viscous to fill in those voids that were left behind. And I tried to spread it out a little bit with the paintbrush after that, but it was really just so thick at this point that I just decided to fill those voids with the next layers after that. I did the same for the larger rock also just to see if I could get rid of some more of those bubbles from that initial layer, which is the one that's going to be creating the surface detail on the cast ones anyway, so it's really the only layer that matters. Although, if you do have air bubbles stuck in the silicone, then if you're casting something, say, in a pressure pot, then you're going to probably get some unevenness. I don't think you'd really notice it on something as simple as rocks, but for more complex or models that 
don't have an organic shape already, then you need to be more concerned with that type of thing. So I let that set up and then I've already added another coat that's cured. And then I have my third and what ended up being the final coat because I ran out of silicone. I've got that third coat spread on here, but I realized <laughs> kind of just before it was too late that I didn't add any registration points to this. So I sliced up some craft foam and created some protrusions here that can be then covered in the silicone just so that it is all one piece with that. That's gonna just make it a little bit easier later on to get the silicone portion lined back up with the jacket portion of the mold. And it would have been nice if I had caught this a little bit sooner and remembered about it, but I was able to scrape the silicone up and spread it over top well enough that the foam was encased because if it wasn't covered in the silicone, these would just peel right off later because pretty much nothing sticks to silicone. I didn't need too many of these, just a couple. The rocks are already fairly irregular, so there's kind of only one way that's going to fit back in. This just makes it a touch easier to make sure they're aligned later on. So that is it for the silicone portion of this project. This just needs to fully cure now. There's not going to be any more layers on here, but it is thick enough that these are going to be pretty sturdy. We just need something to hold that shape because they're going to be pretty soft once the rock is removed. So they would not, it would be hard to have them stand up first of all, once you're casting something, but also they would just kind of tend to deform uh, once you try to cast something in them. So for the jacket, I'm going to do this as a two part jacket because otherwise you're not going to be able to remove the cast item if it's in anything rigid because there are undercuts on these. Just I didn't have enough silicone to build it up to the point that it didn't have undercuts. But that's fine because it's going to be an interesting experiment to make these jacket molds. So for the center, I've cut a piece of mylar and I just want to block off half of each of the rocks. And I'm just using tape to secure that in place. It sticks best to the plate, not so well to the silicone, not really at all to the silicone, but I don't need it to be perfect for this uh, because this is just a jacket. It's not a mold in and of itself. It doesn't matter if there are some imperfections in the jacket portion. The silicone's going to make that have the surface of the rock and then the jacket's just there for support. So I just built up enough tape to kind of keep it as vertical as possible and sort of in place. And that's going to be good enough for these purposes. The most challenging part was just trimming the mylar to fit pretty closely around the silicone. It's not perfect. So if this was something more precise, then I would have wanted to take more time in getting that perfect and not have any gaps. Because there are some gaps, so there's going to be some resin getting underneath. But for this project, that's not really an issue. I didn't add any release to the mylar because it already releases pretty well from epoxy. So I put the mylar down the center for both of the rocks and we can go ahead and move on to that first coat. So I'm using the black surface coat, same as I used for other molds such as the carbon fiber sword molds. The nice thing about this is that it's already thickened. It has a filler in it, so it's going to kind of build up that layer pretty fast without having to do a bunch of layers of the laminating epoxy, which would just be just the wrong tool for the job. It also sets up rather fast, so I don't have to wait as long to move on to the next step. So I mixed that up per the directions, and I'm just gonna basically dump it on pretty much. I'm trying to keep it away from the seams at first just because while it's freshly mixed it's still pretty thin it's going to start setting up quite fast though so once it's thicker it's going to be less likely to seep under that seam quite as much along the mylar edge for now i just want to go ahead and fill in the details as much as possible we want to just simplify the shape so it's easier to add the fiberglass and then of course the resin does need to go up the mylar flange there because we need to have a place to attach the two halves, they're gonna be screwed together. So that needs to be built up and then it will also be reinforced with the fiberglass. That's gonna be a part of the jacket that will be left on there. We'll of course have some edges to trim up, but most of that flange is gonna stay in place. 
doesn't need to be as big as I have it here with the whole mylar thing. I'm just wanted some extra so I had space to work and build out a, a more appropriately sized flange for the halves of the jacket. And you can see it's already starting to thicken up pretty well so I can spread it vertically and it's just dripping some but it's already starting to coat that pretty well. And then it also extends down over the silicone flange at the bottom on the plate so that we have a working edge all the way around. The black surface coat is very messy so you definitely want to make sure you're wearing gloves of course if you're working with anything like this it will not only is it dangerous to get on your skin also will stain anything that it touches so you just got to make sure your surfaces are protected and whatnot. So it's really starting to thicken up now as it got even thicker I basically just left it for a few minutes and then came back once it was, was thickened up and spread the parts back up that had dribbled down and now that it is quite thick it's going to stay in place and create a pretty good layer over the whole thing ready for some fiberglass. If this were a mold that was used without the silicone jacket or something really important then I would do more than one coat to make sure that there was a thick enough layer of this so if you needed to sand out any imperfections you'd have something to work with but in this case it just needs to fill in the larger textures there and make a more rounded shape that can be more easily covered in the fiberglass and this is just the product that I had on hand that works best for that and again it's great with the silicone because I don't have to use any kind of release on the silicone I know that's gonna pop right off once this is cured and now you see why the plate is such a good idea because this is just containing all of the mess of each of these layers as they get built up so for a proper mold where there is not a silicone insert again I wouldn't do it this way but I'm gonna go ahead and just jump straight into the fiberglass because I don't care in this case if the fiberglass presses through and adds any surface texture to the mold surface underneath it doesn't matter for this because it is just a jacket so we're just gonna take advantage of how tacky this black surface coat is and start sticking on the fiberglass now while it's still uh, not really set at all just thickened We'll need more epoxy, but for now I want to just get a layer over the whole thing. And then that's going to be ready to add more epoxy and more layers of the fiberglass. This is a good type of product to use up some of your scraps left over from other projects. So I always save my scraps. Then I can just drop them into smaller parts to use for making this type of mold. This particular fiberglass conforms pretty well. So it's nice for this irregular organic type of shape. And of course it's going to fray and start to unravel a bit, but that's fine. We will be sanding this just enough to take away any sharp edges that are sticking out from the top just to make it workable and so that it's not going to damage any vacuum bag if you're casting something in a vacuum bag. I'll let alone the fiberglass splinters that we want to avoid by just sanding everything down at the end. Now the surface coat is thick so it's obviously not going to soak into the fiberglass very well so that's why we're going to need to add some more epoxy. I just mixed up some laminating epoxy and pretty much just dumped it over the molds and started adding more of the fiberglass just to make this thick enough to where it seems like it's going to be pretty durable. And I could have waited till the surface coat had cured but it just wasn't necessary in this case so I just continued on right away and built out those layers of fiberglass. Of course, reinforcing the flange all the way around because we need some attachment points and just general support for the edges of the mold. I would guess it probably ended up being somewhere around three layers thick with the fiberglass. I don't know exactly because I did it all in one go. With all of the epoxy and the fiberglass and everything on there now on that half, that just needed to cure fully so I left that overnight. Now, in the meantime while that was curing I wanted to test out the epoxy in the vacuum chamber. So this is a different epoxy than I am using for the molds because this one has the longest cure time and it's the least viscous of the resins that I had on hand so it was the best candidate I had for vacuum degassing. So I just mixed up a very small batch and put that into the catch bucket in case of any spills and you can see it definitely was bringing a lot of bubbles to the surface. Even more of them popped once I let the air back in 
it didn't seem like it was quite fully degassed at that point, but I wasn't sure if it was going to start thickening up too much because, again, it's very warm outside on the day that I was doing this, so everything's wanting to set up faster than normal. So it's definitely an improvement. Uh, I thought it might be nice to put it back into the vacuum chamber and just see if I could do another round of degassing. And that was actually a good lesson learned. This is why I have the catch bucket. So I let the air back in too fast and it just blew this tiny container right over, spilled everything. So it's definitely a good idea to have a secondary container inside of the vacuum chamber. Just makes things easier if you have an accident with the epoxy. And also just gotta be careful when letting the air back in to do it nice and slowly. So the first half of each of the molds is fully cured now, so I've just got to go ahead and pull off all that tape and remove the mylar. This was somewhat challenging because, of course, some of that resin did seep under as expected. So it's just a matter of trying to peel everything away and release it without breaking anything. So the surface coat by itself is actually very, very brittle. So that's why it's just for the surface you then still have to definitely reinforce that with the fiberglass and also this is a point where you have to be very careful of splinters because we have lots of these sharp edges sticking out from the raw edges of the fabric so as soon as I had that mylar off I trimmed up those sharp edges just so that it'll be easier to work with on the next stage so the areas that seeped under because it's just the surface coat and it is so brittle I'm just using a well a very small screwdriver using it like a chisel and just carefully pounding into uh, the edge there right along the flange and it just breaks off pretty easily so it's not perfect you wouldn't want to use this for a mold that didn't have a silicone insert or something that needed to be really precise because it is chipping slightly into the part that I would rather have kept but in this case it just doesn't need to be perfect so this is a quick and easy way of cleaning up that edge ready for the second half of the jacket now, here's an important step. When you are doing the second half of the jacket, you've got to add a release to the epoxy portion because it's not gonna stick to the silicone, but it is definitely going to stick to that freshly cured epoxy on the jacket. So I'm adding some PVA just over on that side, anywhere that it might touch as I create the second half. And I'm also making sure that the PVA gets down underneath a little bit to where there are those chips out from removing the excess surface coat and that PVA just needs to dry for quite a while because there's def definitely some pools down in those recessed areas at the base. I did not entirely trust the PVA job on this so I also added just a small piece of release film and just taped that in place so that there's just a lot less surface area that could bond together by mistake if there were any areas that the PVA didn't quite get. It's just kind of a backup release just to make it easier to part later on. So I'm mixing up another batch of the surface coat. So it just has the two parts. You've got the part that already has the thickener and the dye and then the hardener. I weighed those out separately because this does cure pretty fast and the containers are kind of difficult to pour from or scoop from in the case of the resin portion because it's so thick you can't really pour it. It's in a can, like a paint can. So it's not the easiest thing to measure out, but definitely doing it in two parts, two separate containers makes it much easier in case you accidentally dump out too much in one go or something. Then I'm just stirring that up really, really well. And making sure to scrape off the stick, of course. And in this case, for this resin, with these cups, I was not confident that I was able to stir it from the bottom properly because there's some shape to the bottom of the cup where that could hold some of the surface coat and not get the hardener mixed in. So I did do the two cup method, mixed it well, then scraped it all into a second cup and mixed it again just to make sure. So I really didn't want to have any tacky parts on this. And then I just dumped it all on top and let it thicken up again, same as before, and then just spread it back up and over to fill in the, mm, the uneven surface and also to create the flange surface on top of that piece of peel ply. And the same as before, I've added the fiberglass while the surface coat was still well, more than tacky, just barely starting to cure. And I've mixed up a batch of laminating resin so this is the resin that I used before also. I'm using the Easy Lamb. It's a bit on the thick side, 
for a low viscosity type resin more so than the fiberglass resin but I just I like this one a lot better than the fiberglass which is in inconvenient containers for dispensing and it also seems to be going bad kind of fast and also it doesn't seem to cure in the time that it's supposed to so it's not convenient for a project with a quicker turnover of course the laminating resin is much lower viscosity than that surface cut so it's easy to wet out all of those fiberglass pieces and build up additional layers and you could do this in multiple layers letting it cure between but for a project this small and where the jacket just isn't that important it doesn't need to have it doesn't really need to be even just as long as it's generally thick enough to be supportive for the silicone then it's just faster and easier to do it all in one go you just got to make sure to properly reinforce those flange areas since that's going to need to hold a screw at the top so you definitely want to make sure that's thick enough and again the plate is very useful for this because the resin is running everywhere and i'm just dumping it on and then working it into the areas where it's needed once again that's set overnight so we have both halves of our jacket mold it's time to check and make sure that these can come apart so it's easy in the areas where that peel ply is but the peel ply doesn't go all the way down and also it's stuck to the plate of course not the silicone but we glued the rock to the plate and also the edges of the epoxy jacket portion are going to bond to the plate that's fine because we're going to be sanding it anyway so i'm just trying to get rid of all of the unneeded material now so that we can start to take apart all the elements of these molds and the jackets were somewhat bonded down at the bottom there was a spot where the epoxy had gotten under the border enough that it started bonding just a tad at the outermost edges so that's fine for now i just want to go ahead and trim off all of these sharp splinter parts and just start to clean these up so they're easier to work with and then i can do the final detailing of making sure that that they can go back together easily and that they also do come apart in the first place so right now i mean there's no way of getting the rock and the silicone out but that's perfect this is nice and stable to go ahead and add in the holes that are going to allow screws to hold these two halves of the jacket securely together during casting so three was sufficient for this just drilled the holes large enough to easily insert the screws and it's important to do it before you take apart the mold because this is when it's easiest to ensure that they are properly aligned and that's all that the screws are for is to hold the pieces in alignment so that the parts can be cast but then also be easily removable so that you can remove the cast portion despite all the undercuts and i just had these screws that have regular bolts on hand it'd be easier to screw on if i had wing nuts but this was what i had to work with So I was just checking to make sure that the screws did fit easily through the holes that I was using the right size bit so we're good to go on that now it is time to get these halves apart so I'm going to continue trimming away the excess portion of the flange and then that's going to leave just one last portion that's still stuck together just want to make that nice and smooth get rid of any jagged edges too because we don't want this to cause any damage to the vacuum bag if that is how this gets cast of course there's lots of paper stuck on there that needs to be sanded off and this cutting wheel actually works pretty well just to grind also you can use the flat side of it that was working pretty well to smooth out all these edges without having to change tools and i also used the flat of the cutting wheel to remove any sharp edges from the rounded sides of the jacket because those will snag and they'll give you splinters so we just want to clean those up just so that they're smooth with all of the edges straightened and smooth now we can go ahead and just remove that last bit of material along the edges where the two halves of the jacket meet those were slightly joined but only at the very end so that's pretty easy just to grind that out but not so deep that you grind it into the silicone of course and then we can just go ahead and pry those apart any last connection points are just gonna pop right off and then we can just pull out the rest of that release film and remove the jacket from the silicone mold so of course the inside of the surface coat 
is going to have the texture of the silicone. And there's also somewhat of a rough edge where again for the second half the surface coat seeped under just a bit. So I'm just using a knife to trim away any excess on that part so that it will line up neatly without having any burrs keep it from keeping it from closing. And I'm just double checking to make sure that the halves fit together back over the part. We've got to look for those alignment points. I did finally switch to the sandpaper. It's easier for this type of work and I don't need to do any more cutting. And I did some final grinding once the parts were back together because they got somewhat uneven when I was grinding them down separately. So it doesn't really matter, but it just looks nicer to have them meet evenly. And I also used the sanding barrel to just remove the paper portion of that top edge just to neaten that part up too. Last thing to do is just pop out those rocks. So the silicone is thick and sturdy enough, but it also is nice and flexible and releases the parts easily. So this is how you would be able to easily re release parts cast in it also. Just remove that jacket and just flip it right out of the silicone. So this is all ready now to go ahead and cast something in it. So I'm planning to try some forged carbon, something like that. Make some carbon fiber rocks. But really you could, you know, cast anything in this now. You could even, I guess, cast concrete. That would be kind of a waste because you just kind of stuck with the original rocks. But hey, you can make a whole bunch of them. So I could trim up the silicone a bit around the edges, but it actually fits so nicely with the rigid portion that I just left it exactly as is. I didn't really trim off anything. And the epoxy and the fiberglass just keep everything nice and in place. There is a bit of a wider crack than I would have liked in the jacket. That's be just, just because I had to chip away the excess. So again, that's fine for this type of mold with the silicone and the jacket. Just something to do more precisely if you're working on a more precise project or if you're trying to create a mold that does not have a silicone insert, then that seam would need to be perfect. So anything there is going to show up in your final casting, unless you have this silicone that's going to just give us the texture of the rock. And of course it didn't stick at all, the silicone is fantastic, so easy to work with when you're trying to cast stuff no worries of accidentally ruining your original. Wouldn't matter in this case because they're just rocks from outside, but it's just good to know if you are trying to cast something that's the original is important, then this is a really safe and easy way to do it.